Hey, what's happening guys? Today we're going to do another classic circuits you should know, which is an op amp timer. Yes, you can use an op amp set up as a comparator as a single shot timer. And this is a, a basic circuit you'll find in a lot of digital IC circuits. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be using the uh, time constant, the RC time constant tau, to figure out and set up the timing of our circuit. So you know, of course, that tau, the time constant, equals R times C, and R has to be in ohms, and C has to be in farads. So make sure you do your, your calculations with the right amount of zeros after the decimal point, or things won't work out just exactly as you want. Anyway, we're going to use a, a 741 op amp, simple single op amp, and we're going to set it up. something like this. This will be our positive VCC. In this case it will be 9 volts DC. And this will be ground. We're not going to use a negative VCC here and you'll see why in a minute. So our positive VCC, that's pin what, 7? That goes to the VCC rail and then our ground or negative VCC pin 4 here is going to go to ground and then for uh, demonstration purposes we're going to put an LED here to show you when our timer is working and it's going to need a resistor we'll say a 1k resistor just to limit the current well something like that okay so the next thing we need to do is we need to set a reference voltage that's why we don't need negative VCC into the non-inverting input we are going to put a reference voltage and to do that we're going to use a potentiometer and that's that of course is going to go to VCC as well and it looks to make it like you know 100k probably good Really, it really doesn't matter. 100K will give you more uh, definition as you turn it, uh, it'll be finer, you know, control, whereas, say, a 10K is going to give you a more coarse control. So now we have our output and we have our reference. Depending on where we set this potentiometer, you know, we can set our reference anywhere from, let's say, 2 volts to 7 volts because there's got to be a little bit of headroom there. And now we need to set up our RC circuit. So we're going to have another resistor over here going to a capacitor. Goes to ground. And for this case, we'll use another 100K. I like 100K. I like keep it easy. Keep the math easy. And uh, let's say 47 microfarad capacitor that goes into the inverting input. So what's going to happen is when we turn on the power to this circuit, this capacitor here, we'll call it C1, is going to slowly charge through that resistor. And as it charges up, the voltage at this node right here is going to increase. Well, when it increases to a point crossing this threshold we've set here, it's going to flop the uh, output and that LED is going to turn on. Are you with me so far? Good. Let's set up the circuit then. All right. So here's our circuit. There is our LM741. Pin 7 going to VCC. Pin 4 going to ground. Pin 3 is going to our reference. I didn't have high enough, so we just had to use that one. It'll, it'll be fine. This won't give us a fine enough adjustment. And of course that's set up as a potentiometer there, a voltage divider. And here we have our 100K resistor. And if you read it, 47 microfarad capacitor. Now if you calculate for your time constant, that should give you 4.7 seconds. But remember, this is not going to come on at exactly 4.7 seconds. It's going to come on when the voltage here at uh, pin 3 or when the voltage of pin 2 passes the voltage 
at pin 3. That is our reference voltage. So let's uh, power this up. I've got the power supply set for 9 volts. Entangle my wires. I should also discharge the capacitor. All right, so we turn it on, and it lights up. So let's bring in a meter and see what our reference voltage is set to. I'm going to zoom out here and bring this up so we can see what's going on. All right, so our reference voltage is set to 4.1 volts. So when that crosses 4.1 volts, that is when the circuit is going to light. Now, if I remove the power, we come back. It's not going to take quite as long to light this time because there's still some residual charge left in the capacitor. You may have, you have to uh, discharge that every time that you want it to, uh, you want to reset it. And so you discharge that again. All right, all of you out there with your timers, pay attention. On the count of three, one, two, three. All right, how long did it take? Again, we're going to discharge the capacitor. And now I'm going to change the reference value. Get ready with your timers. One, two, three. There you go. How long did it take that time? You see the effect of changing the reference value to how long it takes for the timer to go off. Now this circuit is super simple and like I said at the beginning, this is the basis for a lot of digital IC timers. And what you probably don't really look at here, but I would consider this one of the most important things to grasp from this. This circuit is the basis of digital electronics. What we've done here is we've taken something analog, this time, and we've made it into something digital with the op amp. The op amp is either going to be on or off. That's all it's going to be, one or zero. So we've taken the digital aspect or the analog aspect of time, which can be from zero to, you know, forever, and turned it into a one or a zero. We've taken a decimal value and made it into binary. And that's pretty much whoops, what we do with digital electronics. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. Feel free to comment, share, and don't forget to subscribe. Big thanks to all the patrons. Big thanks to you guys for watching. That's it. I'm out. Peace.